Alrighty, guys. Good Monday morning to you all here. A happy March 10th, 2025. Hope you guys are all doing well out there. Uh, we've got a significant severe weather outbreak and more than likely a tornado outbreak on tap for Friday and Saturday of this week. We're going to get into the details on that here in just a few minutes. We do have an isolated severe weather threat that's ongoing down here in Florida this morning. We've actually had a couple confirmed tornadoes this morning in this area. Not something I expected to see. This marginal risk kind of kicked up early, early this morning as I was still in bed, so I was not able to hop on and get this to you guys this morning. Um, very, very conditional risk zone for the rest of the evening today. We've got a couple severe thunderstorm warnings that are out for wind and hail. Uh, we did have a confirmed tornado this morning as well back here in the southwestern portions outside of the Tampa area uh, in Florida this morning. But other than that, uh, most of those storms are now off the coast. We still have the ongoing threat later on this afternoon for a couple more isolated cells that could develop. This should be off the coastline by this late evening uh, as this system finally leaves the east coast there. We've still got an upper level low bringing showers and thunderstorms in general rain across Georgia, North Carolina, South Carolina. This will also be exiting. It's part of this system. You can kind of see the cold front that's lagged down there on the eastern side of that low. Uh, that will be moving out as well this afternoon through the overnight hours as this system can finally Finally, can, can be gone. Uh, we've had a couple days of uh, low and severe weather across the southeast, but nothing more significant than what's getting ready to happen uh, this coming up week here. Very, very quiet picture for majority of the United States as well. Got a couple showers, snow showers up here ongoing uh, into northern uh, Oregon there in portions of southern uh, Wisconsin, or not Wisconsin, southeastern uh, Washington there, but not anything too crazy in the realm of the uh, weather world this morning. What I want to talk to you guys about is what is getting ready to happen in our weather world. We've got potentially a very historic system on tap for this week. We're going to have a severe weather outbreak, possibly a tornado outbreak on Friday and Saturday. We've got a couple of little systems that are going to come through or a system that's going to come through uh, before this event is officially done and gets here. Uh, but I want to go ahead and start out with today here, just really quick, briefly run through today's risk zone. 2% tornado risk down in Florida, wind threat at 5%, and hail threat is under 5%. This will be pretty much done and over with by later on this afternoon here. And then we don't have anything forecasted for tomorrow, uh, which is a good thing. We'll get a break tomorrow. And then day three, we have that little shortwave trough that I've been mentioning over the last couple of days that'll be moving through the uh, central plains here in southern plains, giving us a marginal risk for severe weather back up here in the northeastern Texas. That's what southwestern Arkansas, northwestern Louisiana, and southeastern Oklahoma. We will go live for this event if we need to go live for this event. If there's an upgraded slight risk or anything tornado wise that decides to happen, we'll update you guys in future forecast videos and in live streams on this situation. Uh, but the big day is going to be what happens on. Uh, Friday and Saturday. We've now got an enhanced risk. Not only for the ninth time this year do we have a day six enhanced risk, we have a day five enhanced risk. Again, so back-to-back -back severe weather days, multi-day severe weather outbreaks expected for Friday and Saturday. And once again, possibly even uh, tornado outbreaks cannot be rolled out. Widespread potential tornado outbreak here for uh, a lot of people that, that are going to be impacted with this event on Friday and Saturday. And uh, if you're in that slight risk there in the yellow, that's a level two risk out of five, level three risk out of five in the enhanced risk category there. Uh, this extends basically from southeast Iowa through Illinois back into the Kentucky, Tennessee, and then down into the deep south in the Arklatech here. And then we have an even more significant event, I think, on Saturday. Personally, Saturday's done nothing but uptrend. As of right now, I could even see potentially even a moderate risk being issued downstream when we get closer to this event happening for, uh, at least as of right now, for a moderate risk for maybe even tornadoes. Saturday looks to be a very, very big tornado-driven day, uh, at least on pen and paper right now. There's going to be also a line of storms that develops that could have a QLCS factor to it. That's that quasi-linear convective skill system when you get a line of storms that produces embedded tornadoes. I think both modes, regardless, are going to be very, very, very volatile on Friday and Saturday, given the instability, the shear that's going to be in place, as well as the lapse rates that we're going to have. Very, very important to have those lapse rates to give you a higher tornado potential uh, overall. So if you're in these risk zones, you need to have a way to get weather alerts. Friday and Saturday are the main days. We don't have anything for Sunday yet, although I expect maybe something to be issued along the East Coast for Sunday once we get closer to that event happening here. Uh, but that is what's happening, and we've mentioned and talked about this for, you know, a good couple of days now and what's going to be happening down the road, and we're going to kind of finally start to fine-tune that forecast as we get closer to this event happening. Now, I do want to talk to you guys about the overall pattern here and why this is happening and where this is happening. Uh, you can see our upper-level trough that's moving off the east coast today you can see our shortwave trough that's going to bring us that severe weather threat for your wednesday down here into the arklatech and into the far extreme eastern portions of texas uh that system moves east now there's a still a lot of contemplation on what's going to happen uh with our moisture potential situation here a lot of the times when you get these shortwave troughs they can kind of stunt moisture and push that moisture back out of the gulf and then when you get the trough that comes in behind it it typically takes longer for it to pull up we're kind of starting to see that just a little bit not going to completely bust the scenario but the northern mode for our severe weather risk zone 
up here into Iowa, Northern Illinois, Minnesota, and Wisconsin is very, very questionable uh, given the lack of moisture that could be. Now, we'll have to see what our short range models do as they come into range tomorrow, Wednesday, and Thursday, um, but we'll keep you guys updated on that. But here's our trough that's coming in, guys. Mid-latitude cyclone, a bomb cyclone. Uh, this is when your pressure drops very, very drastically within a 24-hour period that's going to be moving across the plains here and then moving up into the upper Midwest as we go into Friday afternoon and Saturday, giving us that severe weather threat that extends basically from Iowa down here into the uh, Arklatek in Southeast and Mississippi Valley, Tennessee Valley, Ohio Valley there. Uh, that is Friday's event, but I want you guys to see, you know, there's going to be a second dip in the jet stream behind this that kind of gets going here overnight, Friday night into Saturday, and this is what's going to cause very strong shear and instability to be placed over Kentucky, Tennessee, Mississippi, especially Alabama, Louisiana, and Georgia as we go through Saturday morning and Saturday afternoon, and this can honestly be the bigger steal of the day. I think Saturday has done nothing but uptrend, like I mentioned earlier. Um, not that we don't have to pay attention to Friday because both days are very significant, but Saturday could be the steal show. Of, of the whole entire event if this continues to trend the way it is. We're seeing very strong energy helicity values. We're starting to see dew points be there impressively. Instability is going to be there. Um, it's just is it going to unfold? That's the biggest thing. And, you know, hopefully we can get some things to downtrend. But as of right now, nothing but uptrend. And some of our uh, CSU models, some of our analog models are definitely painting the picture uh, for a very significant outbreak. And the Storm Prediction Center also saying uh, Friday and Saturday are a regional outbreak expected over the uh, southeast area. So um, not something you see from SPC's warning too often here. But uh, troughing will move in Saturday. This will be off the East Coast by Sunday. And then I want you guys to pay attention to this. We're going to get another system. Believe it or not, I know, crazy that I'm saying that. It's March. But another system that's going to try and come in the following week on the 19th and beyond. And this one, believe it or not, could also pull in a lot more instability and a lot higher dew points to give us a more another organized severe weather threat from the Ohio Valley down to the deep south and the southern plains as we go into the following week. But that's about 10 days out. We'll watch this. We'll kind of continue to trend with this. Both GFS and European model are showing this system. So as always, we'll trend it. We'll watch it. We'll watch for consistency uh, and we'll give you guys updates on that now another thing i'm going to show you guys is the low level shear that's going to be in the atmosphere we are going to have lots of low level shear inductive of the potential for tornadoes and damaging winds and that low level shear uh is going to come in here on friday morning and friday afternoon and you can really see where that low level shear is really going to be maximized at and that is where that enhanced risk zone has been issued by spc southern missouri back here into arkansas western kentucky tennessee might even be into uh, northeast texas here eastern oklahoma and northern louisiana where you see those winds kind of wind direction change with height in the lower levels that gives us that chance for tornadoes uh, and then as we go to the overnight hours into saturday morning here look at that wind shear really get going over illinois indiana kentucky tennessee now we see our secondary uh, low pushing in more wind shear out of the deep south here giving us that threat for an overnight risk zone as that risk zone ramps up for saturday and then that system will work its way uh off the coastline by saturday afternoon and sunday or by sunday afternoon uh and then we're done with that so a three-day event here friday saturday and then possibly on sunday and then another one comes in following that time frame uh we'll keep you guys updated on that one coming in the next couple of days. Now, another thing I mentioned, dew points going to be a big problem going to the further northern extent of where our severe weather risk is at. You can see the European model here really pulling in uh, some pretty decent dew points for Wednesday and Thursday's risk zone here, or Wednesday night's risk zone across the Arklatech for that marginal risk that's set up. And you can kind of see those dew points get pushed back out. But I want you guys to see, we're going to get a pretty quick surge north as that front moves in and as that low pressure system moves off to the north. Now, here's the big question mark. How much instability and how much uh, moisture do we get up here in our northern mode? And that's the big question mark on why there hasn't been a pretty big expansive risk zone extension up there. There's that slight risk that's in place, but you can see that enhanced risk that's out for the Arkletech back into Kentucky and into Tennessee where those higher dew points are at and where your kind of your triple point sets up where your warm sector is at uh, and your instability is at. So that's where we're seeing uh, that higher uh, severe weather threat is deep in the south there. And then as we go into Saturday, you can see those dew points work their way east and then off the east coast by Sunday. So you can kind of get an idea on what's going to happen with that. Another thing here, this just kind of shows us our precept and what we're going to be seeing. There's our showers and thunderstorms and isolated severe threat for Wednesday and Thursday. Not expecting too much out of that. And then here we go on Friday, getting that dry line going, that strong EM that's going to be present here giving us the threat for isolated supercells and then damaging winds that will develop overnight across Kentucky, uh, Tennessee, and into portions of the Arklatech. And then we get a rebound in that surface low that's going to develop on the southern portion of our trough. And then we get more moisture, severe weather, and instability that comes in out of that system. And then that skirts off the east coast by Sunday. Still lots of time to kind of figure out what's going to happen, but we are starting to get a lot closer uh, to our event. So cam models will be in range, hopefully starting tomorrow afternoon. Uh, probably by the time we make Wednesday's video, we'll have a better shot at seeing what's going to potentially happen on pen and paper. Here's also the instability for Wednesday and Thursday. You can see pretty decent instability values here on the European model. Uh, and then as we go into Friday, Day, you can see that instability that's set up and you can see still once again decent instability values this far north for this time of the year but a big question mark on how this will unfold more of a uh 
what's the word, a confidential uh, answer here on what's going to happen in the Deep South. We could be seeing instability values, guys, 2,500 plus, which is very significant for uh, severe weather. So just something we've really got to watch for. And then as we go into that Saturday time frame, you see that instability shift north and then up further northeast as far as Indiana, Kentucky, and Ohio here. We'll have to watch out for that surface load to develop or continue off to the northeast there for more severe weather up on the northern mode, but not too too worried about up here. We'll continue to update you guys on that. So that's what I've got for you guys today. Uh, we will have live stream on TikTok tonight as always. Make sure you guys hop over there as always and leave a like and a share on this video here. I appreciate y'all. Uh, stay safe and be weather aware.